Good morning, <laughs> Bill Bush download 112. Wow. 112. Shift 22. We were just saying before, like, how yeah. did the Gabba lose the first test? How did yeah, the Wacky exactly that? That right. is just crap. And I know this is family friendly, but that's just crap. Mm. Good thing about the Gabba, though, we've got a day night test this year, I think. Way. Yeah. Way. <laughs> way. <right>. So, <laughs> anyway, we'll get on to finance, but uh, yeah, we do have the TV going over summer in particular. I like the, the cricket on. Yes. It's sort of a good distraction, Definitely. especially on a day like today where we're down about 80 points. Yeah. It was coming, though, Andrew, wasn't it? I yeah. think. Uh, and why, why is it coming off, Dan? What's, what's going on today? Was inflation out today, Andrew? Inflation That's what was it out was. today? Yeah. It's stronger than we thought. And what's the consequences of that? Well, um, stronger, that's what the government wanted, wasn't it, or what the RBA wanted, Absolutely. so a lesser chance of um, banks cutting interest rates or, or lesser chance of the RBA cutting rates. And, and we've been and talking about that, you know, saying that we thought interest rates would be sort of 1%, the cash rate would yes. be 1% by June next year. That was on the basis of benign or, you know, poor inflation data. It's actually, as you're saying, come out stronger, so those mm. interest rate cuts may not be coming. No. And the share market not liking that news at all. It's going to be interesting going forward with rates too, Andrew, though, isn't it? Like, eventually the Yanks have got to put up rates, don't they? Oh, yeah. they have And to. that's going to impact on the cost of borrowing for our banks. So, then, you know, 12 months ago we were sort of talking about, we thought that the US Federal Reserve would actually increase interest rates one a quarter. You know, so by this time this year we would have had you know four interest rate rises of further one percent yeah. that of course only done one yes uh, plus of course we've got the u.s uh, presidential election coming along in a couple of weeks is that the eighth I yes the trumpinator uh 91 percent chance that he won't get up according to the betting markets but of course after brexit who believes the betting markets silent majority i reckon so yeah, I, I reckon mm. he's half a chance so i might be surprised though mm, so again i guess the, the key takeaway is there's still plenty of volatility even now, yes. you know. So yeah. what are some of the things we should be telling our fellow Dornbush downloaders today, Dan? What's, what's on your agenda? Um, I think watch that 6,000 level on the, the financials. If it can hold 6,000, it's probably worth buying the banks for the dividends. Mm -hmm. um, ANZ, and NAB, uh, West, ANZ, NAB and Westpac are reporting. Mm -hmm. um, and what dates were they? I'm just trying to read your, read, read your writing. So NAB is Thursday. NAB's Thursday, for, for which will report. be interesting, won't it, now mm -hmm. that they've got rid of Clydesdale Bank. So it'll be interesting what comes out I of it. I still think there's a pretty good chance they're going to cut that dividend. They and Westpac, I reckon they're a pretty good chance of cutting that dividend. 90% dividend payout ratio, so they're paying out well over 90% of their profits in dividends. You know, NAB's at a 7% yep. fully frank dividend. Westpac's about 6.2, 6.3. I mean, they're great dividends, don't get me wrong. And, you know, over 25% of our clients are self-funded retirees. So we want yep. you to get those dividends. It's, but is it sustainable? It's 10 point something with franking, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, but is it sustainable? And ANZ took the view that it wasn't sustainable. And yep. they cut their dividends, yes. you know, this time last year. Yep. So. I reckon Thursday could be a really interesting Commonwealth day. held days though, didn't they? Yeah, but Combank, with all due respect to the other three, is in a much stronger position from a capital point of view. Whereas as you're saying, even NAB getting rid of Clydesdale, well, they're not in a terrible state, but they're certainly nowhere near the strength that Combank mm. is. So yeah, bank profit reporting and then dividends. The thing about the NAB though is it's After lower, lower, doubt, <laughs> lower doubtful debts than the other two. So Yeah, but then is that, okay, let's talk about that. So ANZ is part of their also cutting the dividends, also increase their bad and bad yes. debts provision. Yep. Whereas NAB's almost la 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 la, no bad and bad debts, things are okay. And it's, well, that's going to be interesting, isn't it? Whether it is like that or whether it is actually so a lower, because they've got a lower lending base at the moment than the others. So, so spot on. Was ANZ too conservative, and their shareholders are missing out? You know, because yeah, they're keeping well, all that's this money a good back. Argument too. Or is NAB being too sort of yeah, you know, yeah. we'll be fine and we'll deal with it down the track, and you know, one day, you know, day of reckoning does come. A bit of a cruncher comes, yeah. and you know, like you look at the Mervac result the other day. Mervac came out and said they had like four times the level of people defaulting on contracts for blocks of land. Now, they've been able to sell them all off, that's fine. But if that's not a little canary in the mm. coal mine relating to the housing market in particular, yeah, you know, I don't know. I mean, interesting times, Andrew. Hey? Indeed. Now, what were the other two you want to talk about? I can't read those. What's that no, say? that's, um, I went to a Tech Now conference. A which conference? Tech Now. Tech Now. Okay. Tech Now, which is good because it's not the mining companies that you yeah. normally get in these smaller companies. Mm -hmm. It's a whole lot of different things. We've got Gruden Group, they are software development. Um, interesting chart. I think they're only about six or seven cents. They've actually okay. got $13 million in revenues from wow. uh, government contracts. So, like there could that. potential for there. Okay. This, 
Elsidian Group. Very interesting. ALC for those playing at home. That's the code, yes. Um, unbelievable. It doesn't even rate in our top 20, but hospital or med medical error in the US is the third largest killer. Unbelievable. So these guys have a platform where they drag all the information together. Doctors can look at it on one app. Yeah. Um, on an iPad, yeah. um, and if you know blood tests have been done, that'll flag up there so they can sort of follow it through. So I think that's probably got some legs. Well, um, certainly from a compliance or a risk management point of view, you'd have definitely. to think that's got huge legs. But the third largest killer, like that's, that's just, incredible. That is just frightening. Mm. <laughs> it's yes. absolutely frightening. Please, I don't get crook in the US, you know. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Sure just get the next plane out. Oh no, there's one more. What's one the other one? Medibio. Really interesting, this one. You know, depression, we've had insurance come. M-E-S? M-E-B? M-E-B. Can't you read my writing? Come on. I can't read my own writing, so <laughs> yours. M-E-B. Yeah, depression um, um, and mental health, uh, that's the serious part about it. Um, and these guys do a test while you're sleeping, like while you're up, and okay. it's um, apparently 80% accurate. The lag there is uh, they're thinking or hoping that they'll get FDA, Food and Drug Administration mm -hmm. approval in the US by October 2017. So there's a big lag period there, but that's something, uh, another little company worth, worth um, watching. And, you know, just blowing Dan's trumpet for a minute, you know, we, we've spoken about a few of these and a couple of them, we've spoken about RAP a few times and RAP's still continuing to wrap on. Yes. And the other one is that IIL. Uh, innate. 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 And therapies. I think you tipped it at about... 45, 50 cents or something, it's like 70 odd cents. Yeah. Now, you know, yeah. so, you know, they are speculative. We're not talking BHP. And, and just on that speculative side, on uh, 60 Minutes on the weekend with MS, there's people now going overseas where they're getting um, chemotherapy. There's, I think the stem cells are taken out and cleaned it or whatever they do and put back in. And that's actually curing MS, but it's not right. curing it in, in everybody. Yeah. And I thought on Monday that um, IIL might get sold off a little bit, but it, it didn't. So. So, you know, these are interesting ones. They are bouncing around a lot. They are penny dreadfuls. They are penny dreadful. So have a yep. look at them. Have a chat to us before you press that little button. Yep. Anything else from you, Dan? All good. Till next week. Thanks. Cheers.